cinnamon rolls. We've all had them, right? So good, so delicious, but some places are okay. Some other places are, yeah, these are pretty good. But have you had next level cinnamon buns? Soft, buttery, caramelization with the sugar and the cinnamon. Oh my goodness me, check out these bad boys. So I piqued your interest, haven't I? We're gonna be making brioche cinnamon rolls. So we're gonna be using the brioche recipe from our burger buns. So we're gonna have the tang zong, obviously the brioche mixed together with it. We're gonna have the soft brown sugar and the cinnamon caramelized in the middle. And then we're gonna to top up that bad boy with a cream cheese, buttermilk, vanilla frosting. Oh my goodness me, you're gonna enjoy this. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit that little bell if you wanna know when the videos come out. But if not, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. So the first thing we wanna do is make that Tang Zong paste for the brioche. So we're gonna need 90 ml of milk or six tablespoons, 30 grams of plain flour, all purpose flour, which is about a quarter of a cup and one pinch of that beautiful salt. And then pop this onto a medium low heat and cook this out for about five, 10 minutes until it's nice, thick and pasty. But maybe not quite as pasty as this though. Hey, what can I say? I don't get out much. So super important as well, make sure you uh, bring out your eggs. You kind of need these at room temperature. If you need a little quick fix, you could always pop these into like warm water just to kind of bring up the temperature. But just remember to pull them out an hour before. In addition, don't forget to take out your two blocks of butter, one for later on and one for the brioche. I always forget to do this. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit hard, I know. Next, we want to heat up the milk for the yeast. So we need 125 ml of milk or half a cup. So in addition, we want 60 grams of, well, I say fine granulated sugar, but I guess I ran out. So after finding my hidden stash of fine granulated sugar or caster sugar, we're going to need 60 grams or a quarter of a cup. And then you want to pop that little devil onto a medium low heat. Now it's super important to bring up the temperature to about 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. If it gets too hot, just take it off, wait for it to cool down, and then you're good to go. So once your milk has come up to the right temperature, we're going to need three teaspoons of dry active yeast and then give that a mix until the yeast is incorporated. So next, grab your KitchenAid with the hook attachment. And if you haven't got a KitchenAid, that's absolutely fine. You can always do it by hand and you'll gain some good muscle for it. So you're gonna need 500 grams or four cups of strong white flour or bread flour. <laughs> Minus the mouth. And then we're gonna plop in our Tang Zong paste. Plop. And then turn it onto a low speed to give it a little mix. So once that's all slightly incorporated, we're going to add the yeast milk mix. Followed by our three room temperature eggs, minus the shells, obviously, because nobody likes a shell out, right? And then bring up the speed slightly and then give it a mix for a minute or two. So while that's mixing on a low speed, we're going to add the butter, which is 113 grams or half a cup, which is one stick of butter, which is softened little by little until it's all incorporated. So once you've added all the butter, put it onto a medium speed and let that beat for about five, 10 minutes, just until it's all bound together and it's nice and smooth. So after about 10 minutes, you should have a nice, beautiful, smooth dough ready to roll. And what we wanna do is just kind of pull it together very gently into a nice, beautiful ball, tucking it in with the sides of your hands. So once you get it to this stage, then just pop it into a bowl. What we're gonna do is just very lightly dust the top with flour and then cling film it. And we're gonna let that proof until it's doubled in size for about an hour. So while we're waiting for that brioche to double in size, we're gonna weigh out the sugar and cinnamon. So we're gonna need 300 grams or one and a half cups of soft brown sugar. And then you want six teaspoons of cinnamon. Oh, oh wait, that's, that's cumin. Yeah, you might not wanna add that. And once you finally get the right one, we're gonna add six teaspoons and then just give that a mix up until it's all incorporated. So our beautiful brioche has finally doubled in size and goodness me, look at that. So we're gonna take it out of the bowl and then just gently knock this back very, very carefully, just giving it a slight tap and then we're just gonna fold it all in. 
So you want to very lightly dust the work surface with flour and we're going to roll this out into a nice round rectangle. Oh, there we go. I've already planned it out for you. So once you've made your blanket, it's time to get in and uh, tuck yourself in. And if you're wondering about the measurements and such, I'd say roughly about 30 to 35 centimeters to about 45 to 50. Uh, you just basically want a nice long rectangle, but you don't want it too thin where it's going to be showing the work surface. Next, grab your soft butter and then flop it on. Seriously, I don't know where these woods are coming from today. And then you just want to carefully spread it with a spatula. Now, if it's uh, still a little bit firm like uh, my problem here, just be very careful you don't rip the dough. So once that's spread out nice and evenly, we're going to grab the sugar and the cinnamon and just carefully dust it over the top nice and thinly. Thinly, evenly. And once you've evenly spread your garden soil, you're ready to pot your plants. And then next, we want to roll this up really nice and tight. So starting on the front end closest to you, just making a small little roll to begin with. And then slowly but gradually starting to roll it up nice and tight. And then before you know it, you're on a roll. That was the last one for today, I promise. And once we carefully popped it onto the chopping board, we're going to slice it. I'm just going to trim off the tail end a little bit, making sure you use a nice little serrated knife. And you're going for about roughly four to five centimeters thickness. And then you want to find the largest tray you can possibly find that's in your kitchen because this is a ridiculous amount, which is about 26 centimeters by 37 centimeters or 10.3 inches by 14.5 inches. It'll be in the description box. And then just carefully nestle these beautiful swirls into the tray. And don't worry if there's a bit of space in, they're going to proof. And if you don't believe me, I'll prove you wrong. Just don't, don't, don't even say anything. And there we go. There's those swirls of uncontrollable deliciousness. So we're going to let these prove for about an hour, just until they're doubled in size. Maybe not quite an hour, but we'll see. So very lightly cling film these beautiful rolls and then let them proof until they're doubled in size. So while those are proofing, we can turn on the oven to about 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. After patiently waiting, these beautiful rolls have doubled in size. Yeah, eyes on here. I, yeah, that might have doubled in size, possibly. So these are going to go into the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes till golden, crisp, and I, just no words for it, seriously. 30, 40 minutes, you'll see the results. So we're going to be a bit more efficient with our time and actually make the uh, buttermilk cream cheese vanilla frosting. It's a little bit of a mouthful, right? So grab our mixer and we're going to need 226 grams or eight ounces of cream cheese, which is pretty much a whole pack of Philadelphia, right? And then just give this a nice little delightful beat till it's soft. Then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Then we're going to add 150 grams of icing sugar or powdered sugar, which is about one cup and two tablespoons. And carefully don't put this on a high speed because it will puff up in your face. And then to loosen it up, you just want about three to four tablespoons of buttermilk in there. Beautiful. And uh, now for the taste test. Delicious. Look at those little devils. Goodness me. So they've just come out now of the oven and they took about 27 minutes. So I'd say about 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius if you've got a convection oven. So just knock it down just a little touch. But oh my goodness me, I'm gonna let these cool down just slightly before we start frosting. So I think it's about time we start drizzling up these bad boys. So uh, I hope you're prepared for this. Oh my goodness me. Look at that right there. And there we have it. There is our delightful buttery homemade brioche cinnamon buns finish with that cream cheese vanilla and buttermilk frosting oh my goodness me so i think it's time to uh take a little swirl out and um have a try i was kind of looking for the smallest but i guess these two are small but i really want to kind of go in the middle oh my goodness me look at that just to give you an up close and personal with this beautiful cinnamon bun. So I guess all we got left to do is the um, taste test, right? Even up, look at that bottom. Caramelization. Oh my goodness me, it's so soft. And there's a nice little crunch on top. Oh my goodness me. Here we go. Mmm. 
Mm. Oh my god. Yes, sir, man. Yeah. Very good. Can't even talk. The, it's so delicious, it's fuzzling in my brain. Oh my goodness me. The flavor of the cinnamon, the soft brown sugar, and the softness, the butteriness from that brioche. Oh my goodness me. This is a little treat right there. If you've had good cinnamon buns, you haven't had these yet. Trust me. And there we go, another week, another video. So I hope you've enjoyed the brioche cinnamon buns topped with that buttermilk, cream cheese and vanilla frosting. Oh my God, you gotta give it a go. Give this a try, you won't be disappointed. The list of ingredients will be below in the description box. So if you wanna try this out, give it a bash and feel free to leave some comments. If you have made it, I wanna hear about it. And if you wanna leave comments anyway, go for it, absolutely fine. Whether you like it, you dislike it, it's up to you. Also, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Always appreciated. So I'll be back on Twitch live cooking some delightful dishes Monday to Thursday. Feel free to stop by. We start at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. But until next week, amigos, stay safe, happy, and awesome. Take care, folks.